Hello everybody, welcome back to the Aberdeen series. I've said it last season when we were in a Champions League final that that could potentially be the last episode of the series and I'm saying it again today. Today we have the chance of getting to a Champions League final and should we get there, I'm also going to show that game in today's episode and if you don't know already, when we win the Champions League, this series will end. So there's a lot riding on this one. Hopefully we can finally get that trophy as bittersweet as it might be to end the series Feels like the right time now to win it. So let's run the intro and cross your fingers that we can win the Champions League. Hi everyone, Jake here. Welcome back to the Aberdeen series. Hope you're all doing well. Since you last saw us, of course, playing Barcelona about a month or so, maybe a couple of months have passed. There's been updates in the league as well as the Champions League and even the Scottish Cup. We have the chance of a potential treble this season. We're crossing our fingers that we can do it. And this could be a massive, potentially final episode of the series, but it's by no means guaranteed. It's not going to be easy at all based on the teams that are left in the competition but we'll certainly give it our best shot and if not we'll come back next year and we'll give it another go until we eventually win this trophy before we start though as always go ahead and smash that like button for me guys it really does help with the video's performance i know i always say it but if you have a look at the videos that have got the most likes they're often the ones that youtube push out the most they get more views and everybody's happy right we get more people watching the series and me i see more views and more views is always good and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you're in this percentage of people that are on episode 30 odd of the series but haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button as we close in on 17k subs currently. Before you know it, that'll be 20. Comment down below whatever you like. I'll read them all and get back to them when I can. But it is time, potentially, for our final episode. Now, there might be an outfit switch. Maybe I'll record the Champions League final on another day because we're not quite there yet. But let me fill you in first on what's happened since you last saw us. You saw us beat St. Mirren and Barcelona in the last episode. Since then, we played Ross County in the league 1-2-0, beat Hibs 3-1 in the league. We then got drawn against Chelsea in the quarterfinals. We lost 1-0 in the away leg, went on to win the home leg 5-2 in a very impressive victory that gave us a 5-3 aggregate win, I think it was. We were very happy with that. That took us in to a semi-final. We won a few games here and there as well including the Scottish Cup semi-final. We're now in the final of that against Hearts. And we got drawn against Manchester City. Top of the Premier League, we've already knocked out the team. Top of the Spanish division, Manchester City were a different beast. So with Haaland up front, a great squad, Kimmich and Timber got the goals. But our man from Italy, Leonardo Vazzoni, on loan from Real Madrid, decided to turn up. He's only scored eight goals in the league all season, but decides to get four goals in one game against Real Madrid. An incredible performance. We had less than one XG and scored four. I have no idea how he did it. We did not deserve a win, never mind a 4-2 win. And it could have been 4-1 if not for a late goal from Yuri and Timber. But yeah, an incredible first result. We still got to play them at the Etihad and you'll be seeing that as the first episode today. And that's by no means a guaranteed victory. A very good chance we lose that one, but maybe make it through on aggregates. We'll see how that goes. But if we do make it through, we are facing off against Champions League royalty, Real Madrid, currently second in La Liga, a great side. They just knocked out Milan to get into the final. One goal across two legs makes me think we might be able to beat them at a neutral venue, but you never know. First, we've got to focus on Man City. But of course, we've been playing in the Scottish Cup and the league. And even though I won't show them, we shouldn't forget about it because currently the league is pretty much a sealed deal. We just need another point or Celtic to drop some points or something along those lines and we get the trophy. So that will be coming by the time we get to that Champions League final. And also we've got Hearts in the Scottish Cup final, which hopefully will be a nice win. No guarantees, of course. Hearts are sitting third in the league, but we have a way better squad and I'd like to think we can do the business. But right now we've got to focus on this City game. There's been no transfers, no youth in tape. We've just got matches to play today. And here is the team that I've selected to try and get us over the line away from home at the Etihad. It's going to be Torkelton in goal, wanted by Lazio currently. Estevez at right back, Valetic at centre back with Turan. Esprand, Gomez, Kozlovski, Macias, Vazoni, Perea and Wilhelmsen filling out the rest of the team. We've had Andreval out injured at the back and we've also had Odiambo out injured recently. So that's why you're seeing Turan and Esprand in the team. But Esprand was very good in the first leg against Man City. He is currently in real life a Manchester City player. It's where we got him from for only 3 million and he's been great this season and he really turned up against his old side and we're hoping he can do it again today. But with that being said... 
We are ready to go in this match. Can we take out Manchester City from the competition? Much like the Barca match, you're probably looking at it and thinking, obviously it's, you know, 4-2 or whatever it is on aggregate, but it's not going to be that easy. Trust me, they were all over us in that leg at home. Not as dominant as Barca were, I would say, but every time they went forward, they looked dangerous, particularly when you've got the likes of Erling Haaland playing for you. They were very good. So the fact that we were 4-2 up was very, very surprising and it won't be that easy. If Manchester City get one goal today, they could get a few. So we just need to hold out, take it minute by minute. We've got a half back in our team now to bring that defensive line back a little bit more. Uh, that's going to be Gomez. You can see he's planted right now in between the two centre-backs. That should help us out defensively. But here is the first highlight 20 minutes in we're trying to play football around Manchester City still managed by Guardiola as well I believe still got Haaland in the team some great players as well like Rodrigo have joined but here is Valetic winning the ball back long ball forward up to Vezoni he was the bane of their team in the last game it's a great ball through to Pereira Pereira's got a chance to play the ball in he does he finds Macias Leonardo Macias has scored. We got four goals from Leonardo Vizzoni in the first leg and another Leonardo steps up here to score against Manchester City to put us 1-0 up at the Emirates and that will give me a lot of confidence now actually because before that, like I say, if City score one, they'll likely score more but the fact that we've got that early goal, it gives us that advantage we need, lowers Manchester City's momentum in this game and hopefully raises ours as well to give us that chance of maybe even getting another here. But this is incredible and it does make me feel a lot more confident about the final. Last year we lost against PSG and kind of rode our luck to the final. This season we've been excellent against some very good teams. We've tested ourselves along the way, which wasn't as much of a case last year. We didn't play as many really good teams on the way to the final. But the fact that we've knocked out Barca, we've knocked out Chelsea, we could be knocking out Manchester City. Even though Real Madrid are a different beast, it does give me confidence that we could potentially do them in. I don't know where the Champions League's being held. Hopefully not at the Bernabeu, but it's going to be a big game when we get round to it. If we get round to it, let's not get ahead of ourselves here yet. Only 30 minutes into this match currently, but we're closing in on half time. There hasn't been any real chances for Manchester City. Possession is fairly equal. XG fairly equal. Here is Manchester City's first highlight though, just going in to the end of this first half. It's going to be Timber to Ruben Diaz. Diaz is going to play it forward to Bernardo Silva. He finds Rodrigo. It's a long ball forward to Haaland. He's hard to deal with. We know that, but Torkelton steps in well, makes himself big, makes a save, and that could be really important for us for the rest of the game. I'm going to say we're doing brilliantly. Let's keep going. Let's take Estevez off who is injured for Mike Wilson. He's going to be dealing with Rodrigo, so not the easiest job in the world, but it's a great Manchester City team. Kimmich is in there, Timber's in there. They've got Dest at left back. I feel like there's another player that they had in the last leg that they're not playing, someone pretty major that I can't think of right now. But either way, City are through. Oh, is that a red card? Haaland was through there. Turan didn't need to bring him down. I'd rather him have just let Haaland score. Oh, he's actually been sent off. He's going to miss the final. Oh, wow. That's a twist that I did not expect. Okay, right. We need to think about this now. Vizzoni, despite scoring four in the first leg, isn't having the best of games today. Actually, you know what? He can go up front instead of Wilhelmsen. And then we're going to bring on Estevez in that left centre-back position. We'll see how this goes. If Manchester City get back into it, I might have to drop the defensive line a bit deeper. Usually, I just like doing something like this, taking an attacker off and trying to ride the game out. But I'd rather Turan have just let him through. If they'd scored, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. We still would have had a 5-3 advantage. But that red card not only gets him suspended for the next leg, but, you know, it does give Manchester City the impetus in this match here. But here is Valetic playing it forward up to Vezoni. Vezoni gets it to Kozlowski. We're keeping the ball nicely for a team of 10 men and we might be through. Kozlowski's in again, squares it to Vezoni who taps it in and as long as there's no offside flag, I think we've bloody done it. The tactical change from me is a genius. It's Leonardo Vezoni yet again going up front and scoring the goal. I figured his pace might be able to help us and it looks like it has. Kozlowski making a brilliant decision to lay it off to Vezoni there who just had to touch it home. Somehow with 10 men, we've gone 2-0 up away at the Etihad. It's 6-2 on aggregate. And if it doesn't feel like our year just yet for you guys, maybe you'll start to believe it because Manchester City miss another chance, not really creating anything at their home stadium. And we're looking brilliant. I mean, we might actually do this. We might actually win the game itself 2-0 whilst down to 10 men. An incredible result. And 6-2 on aggregate, you can't see Manchester City coming back in 20 minutes. But now it's just a, a case of winning this individual game here today. And we might be able to do it still. Here is Haaland going forward. Esteve does really well to win it back, but then Haaland gets back on it. It's a ball in. 
Big save from Tor Keldson, stopping Lewis getting the goal. It doesn't look like the highlight's over just yet, so there might be something else coming. But that was a good save. We stopped the chance. Still 20 minutes left. Still 6-2 on aggregate. I feel like I should be really confident right now, but I'm still not just yet. At least in this particular match, I still feel like City have got it in them to at least bring it back to 2-2. And there's one goal for you. Mikel Marino scoring. Good hold-up play from Harlem. Plays through his midfield man. He finishes well. It's 2-1 on the day. 6-3 on aggregate. 20 minutes left on the clock. Let's make some changes. Okay, so we're bringing on Guy Buer in the box-to-box. -box. Morrison is going to be our halfback to really give us an extra centre-back in that position. We've also bringing on Odiambo. And of course, we brought on Wilson and Esteve earlier. But time's ticking away. Hopefully, we see no more highlights. We just ride the game out. If we can get a win, obviously, that's going to help our momentum. It looks like it might be happening. After this, I don't think I'll show any league games or the Scottish Cup final. Maybe I'll show you the highlights of the Cup final at the very least. But it looks like we might actually be going through here in the Champions League for a consecutive Champions League final. Hopefully, this year, we can win it. Valetic clearing it off the line from Erling Haaland. Here's Nuno Mensch. He goes forward. He's going to take the shot. It's blocked. Esteve rises highest. We get it away as far as Perea. And Pereira knocks it out for a throw-in. We survive for another minute. 10 minutes left on the clock. Still looking good. Manchester City's XG is at 3 at this point. Ours is at 1.5. Yet we're the team that are winning 2-1. I feel like we might have shafted them there a little bit. But there's a minute left to go. No matter what now, we are through. Manchester City might be able to equalise in the individual game. But as far as the tie is concerned, we've done it. It's a shame Turan is going to be out of the final. Obviously, we're hoping Andrival will be back fit by then. Because Turan wouldn't have played anyway if that was the case. But... Yeah, it's unfortunate if he does end up missing it and we end up needing him in that match for pulling someone's shirt. Um, but you don't often see those kind of red cards in FM, I don't think, anyway. The ones where they pull someone's shirt and it's like a last man foul. Um, but there we go. Time is up. We've done it. I don't want to get too confident yet because we've still got a final to play. Who would have thought we'd knock out Man City 6-3 on aggregate? I'm happy with how that went. We won the first leg. We then won the second leg down to 10 men. An incredible result. Now I need to progress the season a little bit, finish off the league season, show you the cup final, and then we've got the Champions League final all in one episode. Okay, so it's award season in the FM world. Wilhelmsen is picking up all of the awards for a season, Andrew Val getting Young Player of the Year. We've got Pereira winning another Young Player of the Year award. Goal of the season goes to Trevor Fivey, which is awesome. We've got Manager of the Season. It's all looking up for our Aberdeen side. And if we have a look at the team of the season, who have we got? Torkelton's in there. Esteve is a really strange one, considering I don't feel like he played all that much in the league. Clearly he did with 28 appearances, but there were better centre-backs than him. I mean, Andrew Val won Young Player of the Year. I, I don't get that. Fivey's in there. Wilhelmsen's in there. But overall, we're not too bothered. We've had a great season there. Everything's gone well. And you might be thinking, if the season's over, does that mean you've won it? Of bloody course we did, ladies and gentlemen. We smashed the league. If we go and have a look at the league table, you can see we finished on 101 points, 10 points clear of Celtic. Wilhelmsen with the most goals, Perea with the most assists. You might be wondering if we won the Scottish Cup final. The answer was yes. It was a 3-1 win against Hearts. Here was Perea's first goal. That put us 1-0 up. Then we went for a second, I believe, it was one of the midfielders, wasn't it? Kozlowski, I think. Let's have a look. Yes, Kozlowski came in and blasted it home. We were looking very good, going very strong. Then you did get Hearts getting a goal back just after the stroke of half time. It was Nielsen there playing it in. Torkelton did what he could to prevent Diamond tapping it in. But Ronan followed in and put it into the back of the empty net. And then in the 70th, step up Ayan Ibrahimovic for the header. That made it 3-1. And now we have that trophy in the bag. A few other updates outside of that. We are now on the icons list finally after winning all of this and Oscar Wilhelmsen has made his way onto the favoured personnel list we've gone above a few people as well we originally started off just here at the bottom of the icons list after winning the league again for another season after we've won the Scottish Cup though it looks like we've rose all the way up there and you know what we're not too far off being a legend. Maybe today winning the Champions League will be enough to get us into that legends category with some great names there. The other thing is that the Euros and the Copper America are coming round and we've had a lot of our players get called up. The interesting ones for Scotland will be the fact that we've had, where is he? Liam Morrison got called up, as we would expect. Trevor Fivey as well. Alfie Bavage has also been playing for the Scottish national team recently. Three goals in four caps. The most interesting one though, our backup goalkeeper who's just here for the sake of it, somehow got a Scotland cap. I think it was 
literally because of big club bias. He's not played for us for a few years. He didn't get called up for the Euros, mind you, but he did get a cap, which is a bit strange. You and Kidd as well, a youngster that we have on loan, got called up for the Scottish national team after scoring his first goal. It looks like Andrew Val will miss the final, which is upsetting, but let's pick our team for this game. Right, so Kelton will be in goal. That's fine. Estevez, Valetic, Esteve and Odiambo. I can take that. Macias has the box-to-box. -box. Gomez, and I don't really want Guy Buer. I'd rather Kozlowski be playing there. Ibrahimovic, no. I want that to be Vazoni. And then up front, where is Wilhelmsen? There he is. Paolo is also out injured for this game. Turan, of course, suspended. Let's just check we're good to go. Everyone on the bench looks fine. I feel like we're doing okay here. Let's quickly check how Real Madrid are doing as well. Um, okay, so they came second in La Liga. Barcelona, of course, beat them in the league and they're the team that we knocked out of the Champions League, which gives us a little bit of confidence. In terms of Real Madrid's schedule, though, how have they been doing? Um, a lot of wins recently. They knocked out Milan to get here. Dortmund beat Liverpool, but did lose 4-1 in their away leg at Anfield. But obviously, Anfield's a very tough place to go. They were down to 10 men. so maybe not an accurate reflection of how they are, but they've been very good across the course of a season. Looks like some early form maybe stopped them winning the title. But um, yeah, I guess we're ready to go. Let's do it, everyone. Whew. Big moment. Big moment here in the Aberdeen series. It could be another final loss, maybe another step along the way to us eventually winning this trophy, or maybe everything ends today and we win the title. We'll see how we get on. The Real Madrid team, by the way, we've got Sane, Otavio and Aruco. Maybe not the best strike force in the world. Not too... Not too scary, actually. No Vinicius Jr., who I believe is at PSG. Rodrigo, obviously at City. Valverde, Camavinga, Chuameni. Giovanni, Ibanez, Camara, Militao. Not the best in the world. I mean, Courtois is obviously a great goalkeeper. This guy's crap. Get it there, left back. I mean, hopefully Vizzoni has a field day today. And that's something I haven't even spoke about. We're playing Vizzoni. We're allowed to play him. He's on loan from Real Madrid. I mean, if he scores the winner against his actual real club here, there's no way they're going to take him back and maybe we'll get him at a cut price fee. Who knows? I don't think FM will think that deeply about it, but um, he's playing against his own club right now. Hopefully that doesn't affect him in any way. Maybe it spurs him on, if anything, to say, you know what? I could have been in this team if you'd kept me. But here is the left back that we could potentially target today, Giovanni. And he's played it to Sane. Vazoni wins it back. Really close to the camera there, but we've got the ball away. To Esteve, Macias. He's tackled in the midfield. And Estevez wins it back, though. Good play from him. Really good work. Finds Vizzoni. Oh, where have we tried to play that? We're playing it nicely, actually. It's working quite well. Here's Kozlowski. We've got a chance. He's going to pull it back in, hopefully. He does. It's Vizzoni. It's over the bar. Ooh, great first chance for us there. And it looks like so far, I mean, possession fairly equal. Yes, it's in Real Madrid's favour. But we've had the most shots. All of the ones on target have been for Real Madrid. But here is a chance with Valetic. Doesn't win the header. There's only battling well for the ball there, though. The ball comes out to Perea, who's hopefully going to initiate another attack from this corner. Estevez. Uh, Esteve, should I say. Macias. Odiambo. Still Esteve. He goes all the way back to Torkelton in goal. Nice possession. And at least we're playing some nice passes. Against Barcelona, it was more Route 1 style. But against Real Madrid here, it looks like we were able to get a bit of a ball a little bit more. And it is Vizzoni doing his man in. He curls the shot. Right at Courtois, he's having a field day against this crap left back, whoever he is, Giovanni. No idea how he's got on the Real Madrid side for this game. Um, but you know what? Nearly half time, it's gone very quickly, and we've been the dominant team. We're looking good here. Could this really be our year? And here is Vizzoni again, causing a threat to his defender. Finds Kozlowski, penalty, penalty. Pen ref, surely that's a pen. How is that not a penalty? But we're still going. Wilhelmsen, Gomez, oh, just wide. Sorry, Pereira that was, not Gomez, but um, that was a clear pen on Kozlowski, was it not? Either way, good first half. We're doing very well. Giovanni having a struggle of a game. Vizzoni doing well there. Um, we are running the meters against them as well. The kilometers are in our favor. We're working harder. Um, right, where, what should we say? Go and win that trophy. Show everyone what you're made of. Seems to have worked fairly well. Um, and I feel like so far so good as far as first halves go. No Real Madrid highlights just yet. They do have one potentially here with them on the ball going forward with Militao. Can we win it back and create a chance for ourselves? It's Otavio. He goes into the middle to Kamara, to Valverde, Otavio, Militao. Please don't score, Real. I really thought this could be our year after that first half. Militao, Valverde. Oh, just wide. I hate this, guys. I genuinely hate this. Why can't we just have like a 4-0 win and just walk away with a game? 
It would be so nice just to do it comfortably, but it's never going to be that way, is it? Here is Wilhelmsen going forward, finds Macias. Room for a shot, potentially. He goes for it. Oh, Courtois spills it out for the corner. Really good, powerful strike. It says deserves to be a goal on the bottom. I'm not too sure about that. It was kind of at the goalkeeper, but he hit it hard. Caused a problem for Courtois. At least we're having shots on target. And here is Giovanni trying to head it away. Esteve gets there first. The ball comes out to Odiambo. Not a highlight that we're going to watch, though. Nothing's happened there. And it's another one. It's a game full of highlights, at least. It's not a cagey affair. Um, oh, no. Oh, what a save. I didn't even know what to say there. They just found their way through, had a shot, till Kelton tips it onto the post. XG, fairly equal possession in Real Madrid's favour. 60 minutes in. Let's make some changes. The first one, I mean, Odiambo's playing well. Estevez is playing well. Nothing in the defence needs changing, I don't think. But we might take off Kozlowski here for Trevor Fivey. Oscar Pereira as well. Not at his best. Not taking him off just yet. But we'll keep an eye on that one. Maybe Odebert can come on there. But only one sub for now. It's going to be the homegrown player, Trevor Fivey, coming on for our captain, Kasper Kozlowski. And here is Sergio Gomez. A searching ball forward to Vizzoni. A few nice touches. He brings it down. He comes into the middle. Is he going to shoot himself? He's going all the way. Leonardo Vizzoni against his old club, Real Madrid. I say his old club, his current club. He's done it. We won the up against Real Madrid in the Champions League. And I, I thought he was going to cross here. I thought he was going to play the ball. But no, he just keeps going. He keeps going. He drives through. What a goal that is. Powers it past Courtois. We won the up in a bloody Champions League final. And it could be happening. I mean, we've been the better team, in my opinion. And who knows now, with 20 minutes left on the clock, we need to play this safe. Right, Correa, we're going to slow the game down a little bit by bringing him off for Wilson Odebert. That might save a little bit of time. 15 minutes to go. Bookings for Real Madrid. They're struggling now. 10 minutes left on the clock. Let's make a few more changes. Fresh legs and get some new players on the pitch. We're going to bring on Mike Wilson. We're going to take off Macias for Guy Buer. We'll save our final sub just in case. I mean, we can't use it anyway, can we? I've just realised that this will be three subs used. Right, um... Do we do anything? I feel like we might just leave it. I feel like we might just leave it. I feel like that's what we're going to do for now. Just keep it as it is. Don't need to make too many changes. 85 minutes, 86 minutes, 87 minutes. This could be the end. There's five minutes added on. Two minutes left. Have we done it? Oh, it's a highlight. Please be for us. Please be a 2-0 so we can have a solid win. Real Madrid get there first. I pray it's not a counter-attack. Gomez, Wilhelmsen, Guy Buer. Guy Buer with a long-range shot. What's happening? I don't know, but it's gone in. We've scored. Oscar Wilhelmsen has made it 2-0 in the 93rd minute. Aberdeen have won the Champions League. We've finally done it after so many years of trying. What is it? Season 6, Season 7 at this point? No idea how it went in. I don't know what Courtois did there. We've had a long shot. Is it deflected off their man and he couldn't pick it up? I don't know. I mean, he kicks it right to Wilhelmsen. I don't know why he's done that. Uh, but we, I, I don't even know what to say. We're about to lift the Champions League trophy. We've done it. Gobsmacked. I still thought this series had another couple of seasons in it after last year's Champions League final. I didn't think we'd get straight back to a final, especially with the teams we faced along the way. We deserve this. And we beat Real Madrid 2-0 in the Champions League with a young squad, a squad full of players that are nowhere near their best yet. I mean, a lot of them are probably going to leave Aberdeen now, but if it was up to me, as soon as this is done and the reputation of the club was higher, I'd offer them all new deals and that would be that. But um, I think I'm going to play this series off camera, so I might give you a few updates here and there about what happens but um we've done it there's only running 13.4 kilometers getting player of a match and getting the winner he's he's given this Giovanni a torrid day proven to Real Madrid they shouldn't have loaned him out maybe we'll be able to get him now that he's uh scored against so maybe they'll want to get rid of him on loan Leonardo Vizzoni who we trained into being an inside forward he wasn't one when he got here has gone and scored the winner against his current club. Didn't even get called up to the Italian national team as well for the Euros. He was disappointed with that, I think. But um, we've done it. We've actually done it. Let's see Let's see the fallout of this. Victorious Aberdeen celebrate famous treble. Aberdeen lift the Champions League trophy. We were like a thousand to one at winning this. And we've gone and done it. Look at that. Duke getting a Champions League winner's medal. What a guy. Mason Hancock. What a guy. Been here since the start. Aberdeen hit by Champions League fever. 
Oh, wow. The board were not expecting to get beyond the league table of the Champions League and we've gone and won it. I would also like to strike a permanent deal for the Zoni. That would be nice, wouldn't it? It isn't quite happening for us, I don't think. They wanted 46 million or something crazy like that for him, which we don't have. But what a season. I mean, we've won the treble. Biggest overachievers are Aberdeen. Oscar Perea gets the most assists. Estevez developing concerns. He wants a new contract. You know what, mate? I mean, I'll, I'll try and stop it, but I actually will give you a new deal. If you want to stay you can have it. We'll give him a new deal soon, but there we go. The season is over. The series is potentially over. We have turned this Aberdeen side round massively from where they are in real life. Where are we? We're on the legends list. We've made it onto the legends list. We're nearly ahead of Alex Ferguson. And this is the first time I've, I think I've ever made it onto the legends list at a club in an actual save. Always I get stuck in this favoured personnel section. I'd love to keep going and eventually become the biggest legend in Aberdeen history. We've got a new stadium currently being built as well. Facilities are amazing. Speaking of stadiums, by the way, just as a complete side note before we finish this series, I'm sure I spotted this at some point early on, but can someone tell me, is Livingston Stadium legitimately called the Tony Macaroni Arena? If so, best stadium name in the world. Is it named after a real player? Is that some kind of brand? I don't know. What a guy, Tony Macaroni. But yeah, there we go. We've bloody done it. Oh, I can't believe this. Is it going to be a season review? Can we at least stay for that? I don't want the series to end just yet. Originally, the whole plan was just to get here and eventually win the Scottish League title. We've done that for four seasons in a row. Here's a Champions League dream team. We've got Masias in there. We've got Vizzoni. Masias claiming young player of a Champions League season. Well done to him. Champions League award winners. Have we got anyone in there? Um, no one really other than Masias and Vizzoni, who both appeared in the midfield section. Here we go. End of season review. We'll finish the series off here. Might do a five years in the future video like I normally do, but the next episode or the next video, should I say, that will come out on the channel will be a... Uh, channel update video, I suppose you'd call it. I spoke about it last episode a little bit, but I'll cover everything in there about where the channel's going to be heading in the next few months. But let's have a look. They give him Vazoni a D for 24 goals and 12 assists and a 7.38 average match rating. The loan fee doesn't represent great value for money. We paid 4.7 million for a man that's just won us the Champions League. The Aberdeen board really needs to get their affairs in order there if they think that's a bad deal. Masias gets an A+, Andreval a B. Odiambo, now an England international, by the way, gets an A+. And we've got Paolo, Turan. Well done, everyone. Season. Our biggest win was an 8-0 win against Aberdeen. A match to remember was a 2-1 win against Celtic. Not the Champions League final or anything, I guess. And our goal of the season was the Trevor 5 one that did win the goal of the year. Seems like we've lost some money in broadcast revenue, but now you'll see our reputation has absolutely skyrocketed to worldwide instead of national. That's a real big increase. That puts us as one of the biggest clubs in the world now. And if I know Football Manager, that's going to give us a lot of movement in terms of the contracts we can offer. You'll start to see some players no longer want release clauses and they'll be happy to stay here. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be an absolute guarantee, but if we try with someone like Valetic, unless he's still unhappy at the club, he is. All right, let's find someone with a release clause that might be able to stick around. Here we go. Let's try Andraval. Can we get rid of his release clause now? We're going to keep him as a star player and we can at least raise his release clause at the very least. So at least we could do that. I'm not going to go do it here, but um, yeah, there you go, everyone. That is the end of the Aberdeen series. There's our best 11 of all time. Let's have a quick catch up with some players that we used to have. We've got Wilson S. Brandon there, Tor Kelton, Andres Caro, who is out of Besiktas and is a regular starter for them. A great signing for us. It's gone on to do well in his career. Jao Beso went to Valencia. Hasn't played all that much, but you know what? He wanted to leave. He can enjoy himself out there. Sheldon Dorr went to Cagliari this season where he's been a regular player for them, but maybe not playing great. We've got Ross McCory, who is now 30 years old playing for Kilmarnock played two seasons there and hasn't been too great either Duke gets in the team Wilhelmsen as well what a story this Aberdeen series has been I'll end it there I won't keep you guys around for too much longer but I just want to say a big thank you for all your support so far the series has done way better than I thought it would consistent views um, and yeah just awesome thank you guys for everything really appreciate it on to bigger and better things soon hopefully Thank you for everything. Subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss whatever the next series is. And there we go. For the last time, we're saying goodbye to Aberdeen. I've loved it. My favourite series we've ever done in Football Manager. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>